Hello from SlideNerd and hello from Weaves. What's up folks? In this video, we are going to talk about the fragment life cycle in a more action oriented approach. In the last video, I showed you guys the different methods, the order in which they get called, the combined life cycle of an activity and a fragment. Here, I'm not going to discuss about the life cycle part of an activity. We are going to just stick to the fragment for now. I'm also not going to discuss about how to create a fragment. Fragment creation through XML and Java. I'll be dealing it in a separate video. But for now, let's just focus on the methods, what happens inside them, when they get called, and in what sequence, and what are the different things that happen when you press the back button, you exit, and stuff like that. So the first thing we have is our on attach method. You see a reference to the activity here. You can use this reference, store it somewhere here inside some other activity instance, and then you can call get system service or find view by ID using this reference. Also, this method is called after your fragment has been attached to the activity. Then you go to the on create. You have the bundle saved instance state being passed inside. The bundle object in Android is nothing but a simple data structure that stores simple data items, key value pairs. Before your fragment was previously destroyed, if it was created previously, you can store some data in that bundle and that bundle is passed back to you here in the onCreate. But if it's the first time you're creating the fragment, this is going to be null. Let's talk about the onCreate view. The onCreate view has three parameters again. I've discussed about this method in the last video. You use it to perform linking of your fragment's XML layout to your Java code. Just like your activity, your fragment exists as two separate things. One, the Java part, and two, the XML part that deals with the appearance. You need to link both of them together and that's done here inside the onCreateView. OnActivityCreated is the next method. This method is an indication that the activity's onCreate method has finished executing. Why do we need this? If you remember, here is the activity's onCreate. I've said set content view here. Now this is the statement where I link the user interface of the activity to its Java code. Now without this link being established, I cannot access UI elements in my code. That will give me an error. So we have to make sure that the onCreate method has finished execution before we try to access any UI elements of the activity. And here inside our fragment, this onActivityCreated is an indication that the activity's onCreate has completed running and we are free to access UI elements over here from the activity and from the fragment as well. We have our on start then, which is called when the user is about to see the app. On resume, same thing, user is about to see the app. On pause, when the fragment is being blocked by something. Then on save instant state. Now this is the part where you're allowed to save some data regarding your fragment. Like maybe you have a list fragment, you have a set of items inside that. You wanna save the currently selected item just before your application pauses so that when the user comes back to the application he sees the same selected item in the list and that can be done here using this on save instant state then there's the on stop which is called after your fragment has been stopped on destroy view the part after which you cannot access the ui of your fragment on destroy when your fragment object is about to be destroyed and ultimately on detach when your fragment is not tied with your activity anymore. Remember, the on detach is the exact opposite of the on attach, where we were first getting tied to the activity, here we are getting untied. So now I'm going to put a log statement inside each of these methods and we are going to see them in what order they run and what thing, what happens when we press the back button, we change the orientation and stuff like that. So let me go ahead, put a log statement in each of these. The emulator is up and running and as you guys notice, this orange block is the fragment. It's inside this blue colored block, which is my activity. On attach has been called because the fragment is associated with the activity. On create gets called where I get a chance to pass some data from a previously created fragment. On create view is called where my actual UI is being constructed. On activity created gets called to notify that the activity's UI is also ready. You can access it. On start and on resume gets called to know that the user is looking at the app. Now let's see what happens if I rotate the UI. I'm gonna press Control F11 on my emulator, and this 
is going to rotate the UI. And as you guys notice, on pause, on save instance state gets called, where I get a chance to save my data so that subsequently I can use that data again in a new instance of fragment being created. Then there's the on destroy because the fragment is completely wiped out when you change the orientation, just like an activity. And again, we have the on attach create create view activity start resume for the new fragment that has been created remember every time you rotate the orientation you're completely destroying it and creating it again so the sequence of methods repeat themselves now let's see what happens when we press a back button so i'm going to press back here on pause is called first and then as you notice on stop gets called and on destroy view destroy detach gets called now if you notice on save instance state is not called in the case of a back button being pressed again going back to my activity or the fragment from the home screen gets me back to the same methods on attach create create view activity start resume so i hope you guys have understood something about how the fragment lifecycle works individually in the next video we will combine the activities lifecycle and the fragments lifecycle and exactly try to understand the relationships between the order of those methods being called in the meantime, if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next vid. Have a nice day.